Looks like Hong Kong's in a full-fledged riot here. It looks like the Chinese are going to swamp them just like they uh, did in Tiananmen Square in 1989. Um, they're going to lose, the Chinese. Ultimately, they're going to lose. The communists are going to lose. I want to share the history, uh, and I titled this video, The Evils of Communists in China. It's freaking crazy. And when you think, when I read this to you, you start thinking, do you think Antifa would not be similar to this? I mean, just think about that. So let's dive into this. This, uh, this is crazy. Anyway, so this is from Instapundit. Um, let me see, uh, let's see right there. Uh, so Instapundit.com is my man, Glenn Reynolds. He's a law professor at University of Tennessee. And I get a lot of good stuff from this guy and his uh, blog. Remembering the horrific Red August. In August of 1966, the Chinese Cultural Revolution was shifting to high gear. Egged on by Chairman Mao, student groups calling themselves the Red Guard had been popping up at schools, colleges, and universities all over the country. They were drunk with power and convinced of their own victimhood, rather like our own Antifa. Yep. To rebel is justified, says Mao. At an August mass rally in Tiananmen Square, attended by over a million, Mao's right-hand man, Lin Biao, instructed his young audience on what to do. Standing next to Mao, he exhorted them to destroy all the old ideas, old culture, old customs, and old habits of, ex of the exploiting classes. Yes, all of them. And destroy they did. According to historian Frank something, the cultural revolution of people's history, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that. The first death occurred in a school for girls run by Beijing Normal University. On an afternoon of August 5th, Self-appointed Red Guard students accu accused five of the school's administrators of disloyalty to the revolution. Forcing them to kneel, the students hit them with nailed spike clubs. When the vice principal, Bian Zhang Yun, after hours of torture, lost consciousness, her body was stuffed into a garbage can. That's women's rights. Where's Me Too? The students had no need to fear retaliation. Mao had ensured that no measures would be taken against them. At Beijing's 101st Middle School, where powerful party leaders sent their own kids, more than 10 teachers were forced to crawl on their hands and knees through hot coals. In the same city, at the 3rd Middle School for Girls, the principal was beaten to death and the dean hanged herself. At another Beijing Middle School, the principal was forced to stand in the summer heat while students poured boiling water on him. And yet another, a biology teacher, was tortured and dragged to her death. Her colleagues were then forced to take turns beating her dead body. Fellow students were not exempt. Students from so-called bad backgrounds, i.e. the sons and daughters of the capitalists, the landlords, the rich presidents, and the counter-revolutionaries, uh, or just those who just say, I'm not going to engage in your nonsense, were forced to engage in heavy labor, locked up, and sometimes tortured to death. Beijing was the epicenter of the most extreme varieties of violence during that month. But in Shanghai, things were nevertheless out of control. More than 150 faculty members were arrested at their homes and paraded around the campus uh, of Hongdong Teachers University in dunce cap with heavy signs around their necks identifying them as reactionary academic authorities. Rampaging Red Guard students destroyed everything they viewed as bourgeois luxuries, uh, things made of silk. Let me take that off. Uh, things made of silk or velvet, cosmetics, fashionable clothes, and curio shops. Flower shops were a particular target. On August 23rd, 36 set shops were uh, attacked. In Jimin, Jimin uh, Red Guard gangs destroyed anything thought to be old and bourgeois or foreign. From ornamental brass door knockers to antique signs to decorative, the decorative elements on buildings. Shoes with pointed twos were confiscated and high heels were sliced off. Wearing foreign or bourgeois fashions or hairstyles could get one attacked. Passerby with long braids or foreign hairstyles were forcibly shorn. Stovepipe pants, which was thought to be foreign, were ripped up. The Liberation Army Daily, which was directly under the control of Lin Bao, Biao, I guess, and hence of Mao, continued to support, even rhapsodize, the actions of the Red Guard. On August 23rd, it cheered them on. What you did was right, and you did it well. The following day, it promised its students the support of the army and declared to its readers, learn from the Red Guards, respect the Red Guards. As the month wore on, massive book burnings took place in several cities. Temples, churches, and public monuments were attacked. Staggering numbers of homes were ransacked in search of evidence of the occupant's disloyalty or a piece of the porcelain to smash. August of 1966 was a ghastly month in China, but then, again, the Cultural Revolution was just getting started. 
By the end, between one and a half and two million people were killed, but many more lives were ruined through endless denunciations, false confessions, struggling meeting, struggle meetings, and persecution campaigns. By the way, Lin Biao himself was dead under mysterious circumstances before it was over. Yeah, kind of like Trotsky. That was a mysterious, kind of like all the, the challenges of Stalin. All these guys were just photoshopped away. Uh, this is written by Gail Harriet. I quote her in my book, by the way, um, uh, Retire on Social Security, because she had written a, a, the complete re, uh, rebunk, or debunking of Elizabeth Warren's false study on the uh, on Medicare or uh, medical causing bankruptcy. Uh, Gail uh, is a law professor at University of San Diego, San Diego, and she sits on the board of the Office of Civil Rights, OCR. Anyway, so let's read this. This is a great uh, movie you should get. The Red Vine. This is a freaking one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, you got uh, Samuel Harris. Isn't Don McKellar? Isn't that the guy who played Gandalf, I think? Anyway, uh, this is just a great book. It's uh, about a violin. Um, great of sketchy. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big movie goer. But uh, anyway, so let's read what they say. You should get this because it's it's just it's freaking awesome. Um, let's see what they got the, the I guess I'll have to tell you what happens. So basically what happens is you got this violin and I, I don't want to give away the story, but it travels through time. Let's just not, not like time travel, but it starts in the, uh, I guess medieval times of Italy or something like that with a, uh, protege planet and whatnot. And anyway, long story short, all this happens and the violin gets passed down from generation to generation. Uh, it goes through the Chinese uh, cultural revolution and the guy who owns it, um is uh is basically his house is ransacked this whole thing and then when the communist commissars who grew up with her mom to witness um the violin and just the wonders of the violin has to decide between the communist or or keep the violin because she goes it's it's, it's an artifact it's a historical piece it's it's wonderful and she actually chooses thankfully the violin but she retains her red star on her, on her hat. anyway it's just it's incredible it's an incredible story it ends incredibly well. You'll be shocked. And uh, I love it. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's not a book, actually. I love to have read it as a book. Uh, but it's just great. Um, kind of about the, the commies in China and what they were doing uh, to just smash everything. It's just a sad, man. And uh, you think about these Antifa fools and whatnot. You're sitting there thinking, look, you can ban. And this is the issue. We have so much of a history of tyrants coming to power and putting their proteges on unsuspecting folks you have to be ignorant to think that can't happen here you have to don't know you just have to be and ignorant doesn't mean you're stupid it just means you don't know or i you probably ignorant is probably a better case that you say not you're not ignorant but you're just uh you're you're not in rea you're naive is probably a better word and look i'm not sitting there saying you freaking you put a moat around your house or anything like that. i'm not but you know the facts are this happens it happens time and time and time again and to go down just because of some revol revolutionaries uh, that happen to have power um, and you're thinking, well, they can't go too far. My friends, they go too far at all times. I mean, it just it doesn't, it always happens. It's always from the left how violent and evil they become. Are there some on the right? Yeah, a few. There are a few, but not many compared to the left. The left is always out there and is always trying to take over society. And they're all, I mean, look, do you literally think if Antifa came to power, that you could live the life you're wanting to right now. Do you really think that? And Antifa is just a, you know, they're just, you know, a couple of rabble rousers. It's bigger than you think, man. I know, look, I'm not sitting here thinking you need to be fearful of Antifa your life, but you got to take note of what's going on out there and just don't be naive and say, oh, it's only important Oregon. Uh, it can't be like that because you got to say, you just got to be prepared. That's what it all comes down to. Be prepared. Get into a community of fellow travelers and say, you know, I'm not going to let these guys come and just ransack your house and come and just, you know, freaking clip off your high heels or freaking make you walk over coals. You know, you can't, you can't be like that. You got to be able to say, you know, I'm standing for something. And that something is, is I'm going to just like the freaking, you know, only was like 3% of people lived in America actually fought the revolutionary war. And that what it is like 3%. It doesn't take much to change the history and it could be changed the history positively like the American revolution or negatively like the, uh, like the Bolsheviks. It doesn't change much, but what, and you know, I hate to be the one that says uh, bad things happen because good thing, good people allow them to happen, whatever that is. And I mean, so at the end of the day, it's like, you like, what can you do? I mean, can you got to pick your battles? 
But you just got to recognize the history, the history of people who wave the communist flag. And you just, I mean, literally, they are telling you. This is where I read that book, Alan Drury, The Promise, was it The Promise of Joy? No, Come, uh, Come, and then what was The Promise of Joy? The communists have stated time and again, going back for decades, what their intentions are. Antifa is doing the same. I'm not sitting there thinking they're gonna. We need to be a white guard or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying you gotta take people seriously because we have the bodies of a hundred million innocent people who have died because they did not take these people seriously. And when they tell you they are going to do all this stuff under the banner of the communist flag, you gotta just look. It wasn't that long ago. It's four years before I was born where the Chinese commies were doing this let you think about that but that's uh that that's real you know that's real issues there you gotta be concerned with and to not be just to put your head in your sand and be naive don't do that all right we'll see you next time